Hi guys, Ryu here with part 4 Tooth for Blender Box Cutter Master. We talk about different types of cuts. So, uh, simple cut, then slice, inset, join, knife, extract, and make. Now, but one thing is missing from this list, and that's the opposite of inset, which is outset. So, what if I wanted to create an outset instead of inset. Well, the only way to do it at this point with box cutter is to use help from Hardops menu. So if I go to Hardops by pressing Q and click on mod scroll toggle, I will toggle through all kinds of uh, modifiers and in this case, um, booleans. So if I had more booleans going on in here, You'll see if I use this function, I'm going to be able to scroll through all of them and I can recall them. So if I recall this cutter, the inset one, go to Q again and then press on shift pull. I can actually select what kind of boolean I wanted to shift to. So let's choose outset. Now if I go to Q and solidify, I can adjust this cutter to the limits of the original box boundaries, so the original cutter boundaries. Another way of creating an outset would be by using hardops alone without actually even accessing box cutter. So simply um, grab a cube or another shape, move it like this, click on the shape or on a bool, go to Q menu and choose outset. So you press this with shift. Then again, you can solidify it from the Q menu again. So that's, uh, that's another example of integration of uh, box cutter and hard ups and how these two add-ons work in tandem together. Another thing I want to show you is mirroring. So let's create another cube. And let's say that I wanted to mirror this cutter, um, this cutter here, so shift and make it live, to the other side. Normally, I would probably use um, hard ups for this. So I would just press Alt X and simply um, choose my D menu, um, select modifier, then global is fine, active origin is fine, and just flip it, right? However, there is another way of doing it, and you can actually mirror directly in box cutter while you're cutting. So if I slice this cube from this side, and I press 1, I will mirror this on y-axis, 2 on x, and 3 on z. And now you can see everything is live, okay? So I can move them, resize them, bevel them, right? Everything is happening live. And you can remove mirrors that you don't need, so let's say I want to only copy uh, that modify on Z axis, or maybe I only want to copy this on X axis, or maybe just Y. So you can simply remove them or add them by pressing a respective keys. So one, two, three. And these are not numpad keys, these are regular um, number keys on your keyboard on the top of your keyboard. Another thing that you can do is let's recall this cutter by using hard ups, go to top view, orthographic, and you need to remember which cutter is main. So the main cutter was this one, right, on the left corner. So let's create a circle in here. Press V for array. Maybe move it a little bit closer with my mouse. Press G to move it, and double click to perform a laser cut. Now you see the laser cut is gonna cut the cutter and will be mirrored to all these shapes around. So you can modify the cutter by actually, uh, modify the uh, the boolean by cutting the cutter. You can use Ngon for this, to create some really interesting shapes. You can really customize it just the way you want. Let's choose box, let's press array, press Y, to array it vertically. And just click to double click to perform a laser cut. 
And you can see with ease we created something really cool like this. Another thing that you can do with box cutter is to cut in edit mode. So if I perform my regular cut and go to edit mode, you can see I this shape was not applied because the boolean here is live. Now what if, for example, I wanted to perform a cut in edit mode because I had something like, I don't know, a bevel. And I wanted to, you know, it's hard to see what the, where the vert is, right? So I want it to be really precise. I go to um, orthographic mode and I can really precisely make some cuts in the geometry. So later on, if I add, for example, something like bevel, right? I'm not going to have problems like this with overshooting. Let's add some weighted normals for shading to fix the shading. Another thing that you can do in edit mode with the cutter is, of course, a knife cut. But the cool thing about the knife cut now is that you can also use an array. Press shift to slow it down, double click to laser cut, and you got yourself supporting loops across the whole mesh with ease. So you don't have to go to knife, you know, cut all these manually and then, I don't know, move the loop cuts. It's, it's just one click, so it's fantastic, right? If you, for some reason, wanted to um, create a cut in in edit mode and you don't want this cut to become live because you can see that if I perform a cut, the cut becomes permanent. The way around it is that you create a cut, you press shift and shift it to live. And then if you go to, uh, to solid mode, you can see that the cut was not applied. It's only applied in um it, it wasn't applied in edit mode which means the cut is live it was only applied in object mode so the last boolean you see is still live so you can move it adjust it um i don't know slice it you can do all kinds of stuff with it and it will be reflected in object mode only until of course you apply that boolean so if I apply it, it's gonna become permanent one thing I wanna show you in this video is flat surface cutting and how we can utilize it so if I'm gonna use um, Ngon, right? normally that option here is turned off uh, turned on by default and it's called cyclic right so you can see that it allows you to connect the angons and create like a sort of um, line continuous line with angons so if you perform a cut you can get something like this however if you switch it off um, there's a new feature with edit that will create a shape like that now you can press t to make it thicker or thinner and then use all kinds of um, boolean shortcuts that you can use for other booleans. So you can uh, extrude it, you can rotate it, you can scale it, etc. Right? You can shift it to J and, for example, create a panel or a wall. So let's grab a plane. Let's make it a bit longer and let's draw a shape on the plane. like this press j e to extrude shift and double click to to shift it to live now i'm gonna select this shape go to edge mode go to my x-ray mode and select the edges in the middle and press b for for bevel And I can bevel it with ease because there is a um, solidify modifier running on it. So if I remove that net, you can see that you can create a really cool paneling um, effect with this tool in seconds. So walls, floors, um, roof tiles, anything that you can imagine, maybe even lettering or some kind of a cool design maybe some cover for some equipment 
It's very powerful. So that's a new tool added to BoxCutter recently, and you can access it by shifting this option here. Well, that's it for this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed the vid, and I catch you in part five.